Welcome back, proud sons and daughters of Skyrim. Wanderer here. Well, it's a new morning. I've gone through this place uh, pretty extensively, and I did miss a couple of corpses that I got their loot from, so that's cool. I broke down the stuff that I won't be selling. Oh, look, I still miss... Oh, it's an Imperial bow. Never mind. Never mind. We're not going to worry about that. I found this room back here. Um behind this uh, expert lock door that I'd missed previously, and there was a nice bed back here, so slept there for the night and uh, made sure I got everything I want around here, which I'm pretty sure I have. And uh, at this point, I, I think I'm ready to go. So we are going to go, I think, back to Solitude, and then we can start on the cart riding experience Skyrim cart simulator where I ride around for several days or possibly a week in game and uh, stay at inns and basically just basically just vendor stuff and why is it raining here by the way well I, I guess I guess maybe it's we're far enough down maybe we're our elevation is low enough that but there's still there's snow on the ground I don't know you'd think it would be cold enough for snow but hey whatever Anyway, I am going to be riding back and doing that and selling stuff over the course of like a week or so in-game. However long it takes for vendors to have enough gold and to refresh their gold that I can sell all this stuff. And uh, then I'll see you once I'm done. Bro, what the hell? I just saw a random mage as I was running up through here, and guy just unloaded on me. Holy crap. Thanks for the fireball staff, dude. Were you... You're just... Are you an elf or a human? Yeah, you're an elf. Dirty elf attacked me on sight. I suppose it's more the fact that he was a spellcaster slash necromancer, probably, is the reason he attacked me. Yep, got a wolf. Oop, ice race. I will be having that, thank you. Essence and ice race, these hell yeah. Hey, there's a cave here on the way back. What is this? Better save. Reeking cave. That doesn't sound good. If an area is reeking, it's probably... Doesn't look like it would smell bad oh, as a frost troll. All right. Look at that, I don't even... I'm not gonna butcher his meat, I'm just gonna... Not bother with that anymore. Doesn't seem like it's necessary. But look at that, I didn't even have to, uh... Worry about using fire on him, just hit him really hard. Ooh, a grand soul gem, thank you. Guardian circle. Alright. What was you doing up here, buddy? Well, I guess you were just moving around up here. Were you a Thalmor, by chance? I'm curious. Were you an elven folk? No, I think I don't think you were. Yeah, maybe you were. Might have been. Ooh, it's one of those uh, mysterious gems, or unusual gems it is. Before the Ages of Man, and this is Illusion. Illusion. Okay. That's cool. Neat little quick... Very quick dungeon here. Neat little bit of stuff here. Alright. Oh. Glass sword. Glass dagger. Wow. 
I wonder if those are static spawns. I wonder if I could... If, uh, if I'm ever in a brand new save... If I uh, grab myself a horse and run up here, can just go up here and pick up a glass sword and a glass dagger. You know, one nice thing about never having played this before is that I don't have that metagame knowledge that a lot of you have that allows you to just like instantly snap the spine of the difficulty of this of this mod in this game. Like I don't have all that meta knowledge. I do in Fallout 4, and it, it absolutely lets me just make the game pretty much trivial in many ways. Am I going the right way? Yeah, we're, we're going the right way. And this is where is this at, so I know in the future. It's like up here in the mountains. You just you go over to the keep, and you follow the trail up through the mountains here, and you'll find it, I guess. It's not that bad. Not that hard to find. But yeah, like... Oh, hello. These guys are kind of hard to hit. Surprised I didn't kill him. I guess they take... Never, never mind, there we go. So if you hold down the power attack on the horse, it does do significantly more damage, by the way, than just a regular swing. But yeah, um... If you were to ask me what would be a good mod that I would compare to for, like, what I think a perfect in-game economy, carry weight system, like, all of that stuff, how, how should it be balanced? How should it look? How should the... What's the perfect solution for all of the unimmersiveness and then also, like, making a difficult economy and keeping things challenging and the gameplay fun and stuff? What is the best way to go about all that, right? And a lot of you would say it doesn't exist. It's it's impossible to balance all that stuff. And actually, I would say no, it, it is possible. And the mod that you would want to look at is Fallout 4 Horizon. Because it balances things pretty much perfectly. By the way, someone asked about the carts. Um, right here is one of those carts. So if you want to fast travel to another city, it's really simple. You just talk to this guy. Carriage is the safest way to travel. And you say you want to hire him. Where do you want to go? And you decide where you want to go. Um, based on how far away it is, it'll be between 250 and 750 gold. So you can go anywhere in Skyrim from this. All right. Like those those uh, other menus that didn't have a price on them, they have a sub menu under them, and in that sub menu, you can select uh, several different locations. And you can go to pretty much any town uh, in Skyrim, as far as I know. But um, that's how that's what I'll be doing pretty much is using those carriages to travel around to save some time, even though it's pretty costly, paying 750 gold per. I mean, you're unloading, you know, like five to six thousand gold in armor and weapons per location, so. I, I think it's reasonable to do that, you know, like, I don't think it's a big deal. Like, I'm gonna go up here and sell... ...stuff to this guy. Seems there's no end. Take a look. Yeah, he's got 4,500 gold, so I'm gonna unload some stuff to him in the general store. And then, like, it will have been well worth the 750 gold that I would have spent to come here... ...by doing the fast travel as opposed to anything else. Like, it, it would be, it'd be worth it, for sure. Um, I'm gonna see. I think I have some stuff that I can improve some of these things and make them better. And then, uh, I think we'll do that first. The gilded ones, absolutely worth it though. 200 per. Yeah, 100% worth it. Yeah, I think all the curuses would be worth it. That's probably good. Do the light curuses too, I guess. These are probably not really worth it. Uh, yeah, not, not really. 
Other pieces are not worth it, but the QRS is probably about... I'd say you come out a little bit ahead on the regular QRSs. It's probably fine. Alright, I'm going to use a barter potion before I do this, obviously, because we're selling a bunch of stuff. Did I bring any barter potions? I don't think I did, actually. No, I didn't. Okay, that's fine. We won't we won't do that then. I got some looking to protect yourself or deal some damage. All these elven light bows. Are light bows good? I don't know. Should I enchant these? Hold on. Until next time. Did I bring my arcane enchanter? No, I didn't bring my, my portable enchanter. Uh, okay, so I gotta go outside and drop that. I gotta go outside and get my enchanter. Or I could just find an enchanter around here. There's gotta be an enchanter here somewhere, right? Probably in the palace somewhere there's an enchanter. Ah, here it is. Here it is. I knew there was an arcane enchanter here. Okay. This is the court wizard's room. Right, so I wanted to, um... I wanted to see about doing the bows or the daggers. And do I want to get rid of any of this stuff? Is it worth quite a bit? I can do one of these destruction spell... Thalmor things is probably fine. 35% frost resist and 30% shock resist. Those are pretty damn good. You know what? This is not very good. There, I got the frost resist from that. I'm looking for crappier ones. This one's really good. I'm just going to keep this and use it. 40 stamina is pretty good. Or, well, I'd rather have a bunch of magic resist on one of these, but, you know, I don't ha have that available right now. So, right, some elven daggers and stuff. We'll do this. And we'll do this. Yeah, it's like it's I guess it's like six hundred plus six hundred value, no matter what, pretty much. Or plus whatever you know, like if if you use this one, it's worth more. If we use this one, it's worth a bit more. Actually, no, I take it back. The common soul gem is not worth any more than the lesser one. Interestingly, and the grand is not worth any more either. Hmm, it's interesting. So don't waste uh, your good soul gems making this stuff. That's fine though. Well done. Not many enchanters could pull that off. Oh, a compliment from her. Jeez. Impressive indeed. Alright guys, so while we're doing some vendoring and traveling and such, I thought we'd do a bit of catching up on some text. So this is A Brief History of the Empire, Part 3. The first volume of this series told in brief the story of the succession of the first eight emperors of the Septim Dynasty, from Tiber I to Kintira II. The second volume described the War of the Red Diamond and the six emperors that followed its aftermath, from Uriel III to Cassander I. At the end of that volume, it was described how the Emperor Cassinder's half-brother Uriel IV assumed the throne of the Emperor of the Empire of Tamriel. It will be recalled that Uriel IV was not a septum by birth. His mother, though she reigned as Empress for many years, was a dark elf married to a true septum emperor, Pelagius III. Uriel's father was actually Kataria I's consort after Pelagius' death, a Breton nobleman named Galavir. Lariat. Before taking the throne of the Empire, Cassander I had ruled the kingdom of Wayrest, but poor health had forced him to retire. Cassander had no children, so he legally adopted his half-brother Uriel and abdicated his, king his kingdom. Seven years later, Cassander inherited the Empire at the death of his mother. Three years after that, Uriel once again found himself the recipient of Cassander's inheritance. Uriel IV's reign was a long and difficult one. Despite being a legally adopted member of the Septim family, and despite the Lariat family's high position, indeed they were distant cousins of the Septims, few of the Elder Council could be persuaded to accept him fully as a blood descendant of Tiber. The Council had assumed much responsibility during Kataria I's long reign and Cassander I's short one, and a strong-willed alien monarch like Uriel IV found it impossible to command their unswearing, unswerving fealty. Time and again, the council and emperor were at odds, and time and again, the council won the battles. Since the days of Pelagius II, the elder council had consisted of the wealthiest men and women in the empire, and the power they wielded was conclusive. 
The council's last victory over Uriel IV was posthumous. Andorak, Uriel IV's son, was disinherited by vote of the council, and a cousin more closely related to the original Septim line was proclaimed Sepphoris II in 247 of the Third Era. For the first nine years of Sepphoris II's reign, those loyal to Andorak battled the imperial forces, an act that the sage Erinthine called Tiber Septim's heart beating no more, the council granted Andorak the High Rock Kingdom of Shornhelm to end the war and Andorak's descendants still rule there. By and large, Sepphoris II had foes that demanded more of his attention than Andorak. From out of the Sumerian nightmare, in the words of Arantine, a man who called himself the Cameron Usurper, led an army of Daedra and undead warriors on a rampage through Valenwood, conquering kingdom after kingdom. Few could resist his onslaught, and as month turned to bloody month in the year 249 of the Third Era, even fewer tried. Severus II sent more and more mercenaries into Hammerfell to stop the usurper's northward march, but they were bribed or slaughtered and raised as undead. The story of the Cameron usurper deserves a book of its own, it is recommended the reader find Palux Ilthris, The Fall of the Usurper, for more details. In short, however, the destruction of the forces of the usurper had little to do with the efforts of the emperor. The result was a great regional victory and an increase in hostility toward the seemingly inefficious empire. Uriel V, Sepphoris II's son and successor, swiveled opinion back toward the latent power of the Empire. Turning the attention of Tamriel away from internal strife, Uriel V embarked on a series of invasions beginning almost from the moment he took the throne in 268. Uriel V conquered Roscrea in 271, Kathnaque in 276, Enelzia in 279, and Ezraniet in 284. In 288, he embarked on his most ambitious enterprise, the invasion of the, con of the continent kingdom of Akavir. This ultimately proved a failure, for two years later, Uriel V was killed in Akavir on the battlefield of Ianith. Nevertheless, Uriel V holds a reputation second only to Tiber as one of the two great warrior emperors of Tamriel. The last four emperors beginning with Uriel V's infant son, are described in the fourth and final volume of this series. Alright folks, it is a momentous day. I have been spending some time running around selling stuff, and I'm not done yet, but all the vendors are out of gold, and I have more than enough, way more than enough, to get a home here in Whiterun, and I think what I'm going to do is just spend some time reading skill books, and getting my training specifically in lockpicking so I can get to the next break point on lockpicking, which is at uh, level 40. That would be very, very nice. And then uh, maybe I'll look into making some iron locks too. I don't know, maybe I can use those for lockpicking practice. But in any case, I am going to buy a home here so I can have a home in which to store my stuff, craft stuff, I still think White Run's the best spot. I mean, look, it's centrally located between everything. It's got good shops here. It's a nice town. It is kind of the default home for people, I suppose, but... And it's it's also got... The home here has got a really nice uh, selection of crafting stuff. So, yeah. I'm going to buy myself a home here. But, yeah, that way I can... I can immersively sit in my house and study my books and um, wait for all the vendors' gold to refresh so I can then sell more stuff to them. And what will I do with all that gold, you say? Well, I think I'll probably be investing a lot of it into training various magical skills. Mostly so I can get free perks, but also so that I can get some utility spells and stuff too. So this guy right here is the one who will sell me that house. I Jarl Balgruff as steward. Can I buy a house? Splendid. There's a house available right now. I'll take it. Wonderful. Here's the key to your new home. Boom. Easy. Enjoy your visit to Dragon's Reach. So yeah, 25k, Breeze Home. Now, I believe you can upgrade stuff here too. I'm not sure if 
I need to talk to this guy about it or someone else? The Jarl is, as you can imagine, very busy. Yeah, decorate my home. I'll be glad to help you. And of course, don't forget to consult your home decorating guide for descriptions of the decorations you can buy. Now, what would you like to purchase? Um... Yeah, we're gonna buy all this stuff. Very well. I'll make the arrangements. The next time you visit your house, your new furnishings will be in place. Is there anything else you'd like to purchase? Yeah, I'm just gonna go through and buy all these guys. Alright. Finally have our own home. A place to race, rest our head and relax and train and... It's already furnished and everything for us. Look at this. Got weapon racks and display our weapons over here. Hmm, this is perfect. A place I can sit down by the fire, have a nice cup of mead or wine or whatever, and read my books and train and wait for vendors to refresh. And then come in here and uh, serve people from my bar if I want to. Got a nice oven here we can cook stuff in. Is there anything extra here I can make? Or Oh, we can specifically make bread here. I see. That's interesting. And then we have a cooking pot where we can make regular stuff. I see. All the stuff you'd expect from like a campfire. Ah uh, yes, The Great War. A very good book. We've read that before. Bookcases. Okay. We've got an upper loft up here. Oh, very nice. Yes. Very well furnished. Lots of spots for things we can put on our weapons. Plaques here. Master bedroom, of course. A journal. For our, our exploits. I guess this is for our business exploits. A spare key to Breeze Home. Not sure why there's a spare one there, but okay. Shrine to Talos, because we're a proper Nord. Cool. I think I'll use that for my primary chest. I guess if I wanted to get really immersive, I could put my gold into here or something and, you know, whatever, but... It's not super necessary. Ah, guest rooms. Very nice. Okay, pretty cool. And then downstairs we have the alchemy lab, and is there a blacksmithing forge too? Bear room. Wow. Ooh, yes. Very nice. Our own private bath down here. Very nice. I think there's supposed to be water coming down from there, but there's not for some reason. There's no, like, waterfall effect. In any case, we have our own fresh water here. Very nice. We're going to leave the mushrooms just because they're pretty. Even I could use them for alchemy. Here we go. Here's the forge. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, boys. This is what I'm talking about. You know what? This is where we're going to keep everything. Right here. over, the, Or maybe over here. Yes. A chest. Centrally located chest. With every crafting bench you could ever want. It's everything I ever wanted, guys. I'm so happy. All right. But, yeah. The primary thing I want to do right now is going to be to... Uh, Sit down by the fire and do some training. Do I still have spell research going or anything? No, I just have training fatigue from doing uh, doing training with my lockpicking book. Did, which, by the way, did I get another skill up with that? Now we got some skill, though. Okay, so I'm literally going to sit here for a couple of days and wait for gold to refresh on vendors and um, read this advances in lockpicking book. Because it gives me lockpicking skill, and I'm sick of not being able to, being able to pick locks, so... Or no, proper lockpick design is what it's called. Yeah, so we're just gonna read this for, like, a couple days. Almost forgot we gotta tell, um... Old Lady Greymane that her son is saved. Please tell me you have news of my son. Yep, your son is safe. Is he? You've saved him? I must see him at once. He's not here. He didn't think it was safe to return. What? After all this, I can't even see him? How? How do I know you're telling me the truth and not just what I want to hear? 
He told me to tell you that to suffer the winter's cold wind. For it bears aloft next summer's seeds. That's my boy. So it's true then. For now it's enough to know that he's alive. I can find peace in that. Thank you, dear friend. You've given me back my son. I'd had Eorland forge this for Thorald. It was to be a present for his return. I suppose he can't have it now. Why don't you take it? We can always make another for the day when this war ends and Thorald can come home. Ooh, Skyforge Steel Battle Axe. All right, well, thank you. Bye now, dearie. Is this actually pretty good? It actually is quite good. Uh, 268, and that has not been tempered. Now, when it comes to Skyforge Steel, I believe that we would want to have the Companions Smith temper that for us. Let me see uh, what that looks like once it's tempered by him. Got a lot of steel to shape. Can you temper my equipment? Need something? Um. I guess all my weapons, sure. All right then. Can I not do the Skyforge one? I need a I need a ingot. Okay, so he'll do it, but he needs the ingot. I need the galatite ingot. So he'll do it, but he needs ingots from me to do it. He's materials. He won't just give you the materials. Supposedly he does a way better job than the player can, though. So uh, I should definitely do that. So I should get my malachite and make some galatite. I have the materials to make galatite, I think. All right, let me see here. That would be stored here. Steel and Quicksilver. Okay, that's pretty easy. So, shatter some steel, shatter some Quicksilver. Yeah, I got steel. I've got plenty of Quicksilver too. So I don't have to shatter some of those. Do a couple, that way we've got some, and then we go and do some Quicksilver Fragments. Okay, and then we can forge those together here into Galatite Ingots, nice. Cool, plenty. All right, so we'll take the Malachite and the Galatite up there and have it tempered, have all of our gear tempered by him. Oh, we need some Calcinium probably too, because our chest piece is the Elven one, because this has a huge armor rating bonus on it too, so I decided to go ahead and use this. Um, probably requires Calcinium ingot. Been kind of doing the whole sorting and crafting and all that kind of stuff, you know, while I'm sort of learning stuff on this, uh, the crafting systems and such. The best way to go about things. But okay. Got a lot of steel to shape. Gods be praised. Also see what he has for sale. Does he have any ingots? He's got malachite. Um, he doesn't have any of the type that I need, though. He doesn't sell it himself. That's fine. He does not sell Skyforge Steel stuff either, which I'm pretty sure you can get. Or maybe it's just really, really rare. Okay, um, I would like to have you temper my stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's, uh, let's say everything. All right, then. Did he already do it? How come can't I... Is it already in good, like, the best shape it can be? That might be it. Okay, and then weapons. Right, let's do this then. Okay, it's 295 versus this. 
Eh, my glass gray sword's a bit better. And the sky forged steel battle axe, unfortunately. So, and this is not that big of an upgrade, really. One point of damage. I was led to believe it'd be significantly more than that. Like he'd be, it'd be a lot more. I mean, it is a tiny bit more. But from hearing some people talk, I thought it would be a really significant increase. Is it free though? It doesn't charge anything. Yeah, it's just okay. Holy crap, that's a lot more damage though. Holy crap, that's insane. Light bows are really quick in terms of how fast they shoot. That's pretty good actually. Uh, the difference in that is crazy. So I think there there goes there goes Ayla, by the way, shooting off her explosive arrows. Jeez. I think you got it there, Ayla. I'm pretty sure that target is dead. So yeah, it's I thought I was led to believe that'd be a lot bigger of a deal than it is. It's really it's pretty minimal, the damage difference. I'll just temper my own stuff in that case. It's not worth coming all the way up here for it. Unless you really want to roleplay hard. Okay, back to uh, continuing to organize my house and dump off the stuff that I have in my inventory there. I'm not moving this stuff. Stuff just keeps falling all over the place. It's not me doing this. This is not my fault. Alright guys, it's been a couple of days, um, I have sold off all my stuff, I've organized everything, I put my food ingredients into here, everything I want to use for cooking is over here in my, uh, my cupboard over here, so we can run over here and make pies or bread or regular food, whatever we want to make. My books are stored over here in the bookcases, um, I have my stuff downstairs organized. Uh, down here is my alchemy stuff. This is all for alchemy, or no, sorry, this is enchanting stuff. This is all enchanting and spell research. This is kind of the, uh, the mage's chest, I guess you'd say. I do have potions in here too, which is a mistake. I, actually, you know what? These should be, these should be somewhere else. Whatever, it's fine. Over here is all of my alchemy ingredients. So I'll be storing those here, and these are here because they are specifically for alchemy. They're like my alchemy set. I have a couple of alchemy efficiency pieces, so I'm going to gather enough of those so I can have a full set of those. Do that. Animal parts are over here. So all of the various organs and bones and hides and leather and that kind of stuff all over here by the tanning rack. All of the ores and such are over here along with uh, various armor pieces. Some of these armor pieces I probably will take up eventually. Some of these I am keeping because I might end up using them because they're pretty powerful in terms of their enchants. Like 35% frost resist is pretty damn good. Might keep those around for a while. And then we just have some wood and tinder and stuff over here, some straw, that kind of stuff there. So yeah, we're all organized, finally. Uh, I think we're finally good to go. I've sold off everything I wanted to sell off, so we're in pretty good shape. Um, I have a substantial amount of food and stuff on me. That's that's the majority of my carry weight right now is just um, food and uh, and and gold, pretty much. So I think I am ready to go on another quest. Let me see what we have. Bring the beacon to Mount Kilcreath. Where is this? Boy, it's really far up there. We should have done that before when we were up in Solitude. I could ride up to Solitude, I guess. This is going to be a difficult quest, but it's all undead, and I do have a nice undead killing weapon now. Fire damage, silver greatsword. This should work just fine for that, I'd assume. The Golden Claw. Oh, right. We could do the Golden Claw. I bet we can get away with, with doing the Golden Claw. Yeah, okay. I'm down. Let's do it. I upgrade my horse armor as well. This is the Nordic Imperial Barding, which is very good. It's uh, over 300 armor for the horse, which is 
about 10 times what I had on him before, so pretty significant upgrade. Going the right way. Uh, not really. Over this way. Okay, we are here. Time to take down Bleak Falls Barrow. Been a while, guys. Been a long time coming. One shot. Easy. Blood, pelt, ingredients. And that will be good. Are you really that tanky? Or did I miss you? Oh yeah, I just missed you earlier. You'll bury me, huh? You boys got anything good or? I heard somebody else too. Oh, uh, not really. Too bad I hit a lot harder, buddy. Really? I can't do anything? Am I... in Magicka negative right now? Yeah, training fatigue. Rip. Okay. Almost fine. I'll just use a poultice then, I guess. Crappy health restore potion. We're not good for too much else anyway. Just hurt somebody else too. Heard some casting or something going on. Yep, lock picking still sucks. All right, well, see you, fellas. Let's go deeper in. Probably should save as well. It's a long ride here. Bye bye. Oh, bye bye to me. You foolish fool. Challenging someone on a horse. <laughs> Holy shit! I think we got them. Are they dead? They better be dead after that. I think we got them. That's hilarious. Iron Dagger, thank you. We'll take that for making more, uh, whatchamacallit. Whatchamacallit. 
Not a lot. Like, these guys are not even worth getting off the horse for. Other ones downstairs. You know what? I'm not going to even bother. This is the real test, boys. Are we good enough for Bleak Falls Barrow? It's pretty hard. The spider in here is pretty tough. Trouble like me? Oh, sh shoot! Move! Oh god, stuck. Twas stuck. Twas stuck. It's okay though, these guys are pretty easy. An angry note. This is some pretty basic stuff. I'd assume. I'd assume it's going to be pretty easy to go through here. I'd hope anyway. Actually, want the meat, whatever, it's fine. I am like lacking. Oh, you know what it is? I need to like, I need to bathe and stuff, don't I? I don't have my stamina regen stuff going. Bear carrot stew. I think the bear carrot stew is already going, but I don't think I have, um, my stamina regen from my being clean. Yeah, I'm dirty, that's why. Okay, well. Bunch of dead ones over here. that silver sword I've got a silver great sword though so no real need for that there are undead in here so it would make sense I suppose would be worth having that and this is one dungeon that I do remember somewhat if I remember correctly then we're gonna be fighting Draugr pretty soon and they are gonna be pretty tough but thankfully you know, we've got this nice silver greatsword, which should do pretty good damage against them. Nothing up here. God, there's like nothing here for a while. Oh, ill-fated Bjorn. Okay, Bjorn's not. We're not going to use our silver sword against him. Bye, bye, Bjorn. Uh, passing all that, I think. Ah, yes, this thing. I remember this. Um. So yeah, we just do, um, snake, it's gonna be snake, snake, fish. Go 
Got it. And this was as far as the bandits got. Because they couldn't get past this trap because they were real dumb. Not the brightest bulbs, you know? Soul gems, always thankful for those, thank you. Eh, just a soul gem. Ancient text as well, which is kind of nice. This is pickpocketing. Okay. I haven't really ever been a pickpocket person because if you get caught, like, it's all over. You have to just, like, save scum your way through the game, and that doesn't seem very fun to me. Ooh, fireball scroll. I will take that. We're at 41. I did not realize we were that high. We're at 41, then we ought to be able to, uh... Invest in some more points. I, I thought did I invest at 40 on two hand? I guess I did Guess I did we are using greatsword quite a bit. I'm just not sure if I want to go greatsword or battle axe um, It's a hard choice guys So 50 is our next upgrade there Yeah, this is the part, guys. This is the part. Okay. The part where we kill a big spider, but the spider's really tough now, so... Should probably use the poison resist thing here. Maybe fortify two hand for more damage. Stamina regen. Health regen. Armor rating. Then potion of poison resist if I have one. Uh, yeah, I do have one. 41% for a good long time. That's good. Okay. Here it goes. Let's hope I can get it. Easy. Get me down. Two shot him, man. Get me down. Get me out of here. Get me out. Anything good in these? Can't they have spider eggs in them sometimes? Which is pretty good. Yep, it came loose. Thanks to the claw. He would have run anyway. He's a traitor. He would have run away. He's a jerk. I have played a little bit of this game before, you know? These, like, almost never have anything in them. They're, like, there will be, like, one random one that'll have a very expensive ring in it or something, and then you'll be like, oh, I have to search all of them just in case one has a good ring or something. Okay, now we're gonna be fighting... We're gonna be fighting the undead. We'll see how effective the silver sword is against them. It's very effective. Oh, 
God damn. I forgot about that, though. I saw it at the very last second that I stepped on it. God damn, that was close. I'm not sure if that would have killed me, but, I mean, probably. That was pretty rough. One thing I don't want to do, though, is run out of charges on this thing. We're almost out of charges already? Holy crap. I kind of want to save it for the end then, yeah? I mean, I guess I can recharge it. Yeah, I guess we do have some gems we can use to recharge it. Okay. But maybe we just chill out on it for now and use our glass one. You know what? It's fine. It's almost. It's already almost en uh, empty. So, I'll just recharge it once we get a bit further in. Okay, we're good. We're out of charge for it, but it's still doing good damage. I'm gonna use another crappy health potion here. Doing all right so far. Health is good. Just a nice big power attack, and hey, down they go. Ugh, it's a terrible chest. Is this the right way? I think it's the only way, right? There's a way we can go over here, too. And we came in over here. Yeah, this is the only way we can go, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. I got turned around for a second. This is the only way we can go. Iron ore. Um, just iron is not really worth my time. I do want to test something, though, because people keep telling me I need to attack this with an iron pickaxe. It's way, way faster. Okay, we're not hitting it there. Crouch down. I mean, it's not really that much fa like, it's not that much faster than the regular animation. Maybe, like, that's been changed, because, like, this is faster to attack like this, but it seems like when you're attacking the ore vein, it's different. Seems like it's different to me. It's entirely possible that, like, if you're talking about the base game of Skyrim, that maybe that's the case, but it seems like here that's not really the case. Here, it doesn't really matter if you do a, the regular animation or if you attack. It does take stamina when you attack, though, so that's a consideration. Hmm. 
Burning stamina is never good. Troll? It's a troll. Okay, pretty easy. Blood, pelt, ingredients. No, just dispose. Go away. I could actually um, bathe here. <laughs> It'd be a very bad idea to actually bathe here, but I could do it. And that would give me the stamina buff I've been wanting. Just getting a little cleaned up here in the middle of a frozen cave, you know. No big thing. It's fine. Nothing bad could ever come of that. Next to the dead skeever here. Okay, nice and clean. Lots of stamina regen. There we go. We're feeling clean and attractive. Okay, uh, hone sort of ice. I mean, alright. It's kind of crap. Water breathing potion is cool, though. Would have been nice if I was a low level. Some of the loot and stuff in here is low level, but I think the enemies would be pretty damn hard if you're just starting out. Okay, we're going back into Draugr territory, I would say. Time to pull out our great sword. Where are we at here? Oh yeah, Draugr's are up there. Draugr's ahead. They almost beat me on the swing there. Even though I started to wind up a lot before he did. Okay, so there's like a secondary area here. Wonder why they split up. I could level up too, I guess, couldn't I? Alright, do some health, that's fine. Got a perk here to spend. Um I really I guess I really should invest into great sword if I'm gonna go great swords. I mean people say great swords are good. So you know what? I'll go ahead and do it. The attack speed. I just hope that the attack speed buffs the swing speed of power attacks too. That was what I was like concerned about because if it doesn't, it would feel like a big waste. If it does, then that's it's fine. I think 10% is really good on the attack speed. I don't trust myself on these at all. Okay, never mind, we're fine. Well, it definitely does. I can already tell a difference on the attack speed and the power attacks. Whoa! Somebody thumed my ass, and it really, really hurt. Need a big restore health potion. Ouchies. Oh my god, I'm just about dead. I'm gonna hide for a second, guys. That freaking hurt. Please, no more of that. That was almost all my health. I think I got hit twice, though. Oh, that's a high one. He's trying to do it again. No, 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 no. That was ouchies. Well, silver sword's definitely doing work, even without the fire damage. 
you know, doing work. These guys just aren't even worth looting, are they? The ancient Nordic stuff is just junk. It's pretty bad. Is this a trap? Oh. Well. It's a it's a fake trap designed to make you accidentally fall off. I know I could like knock these things down and make things explode and stuff, but eh, too lazy. Okay, we're gonna be into the end part pretty soon here. Not sure what this depicts exactly. Or who. Whether it's like dragon priests or gods or just ancient mages. Not sure what it all means. Okay. So we gotta look at our claw here. That we got from the other guy. Got to... Uh, examine it. And we can see it is Bear Butterfly Owl. Okay. Bear Butterfly Owl. There we go. I remember them showing this off at like an E3 or whatever it was back then. Everyone being so impressed by this. The fact that you could examine the item like that and see it and... Okay, we should probably recharge now, I would say. Not sure if you can do that in combat. Probably you can. Um, I think any of these will work, right? Lesser would take me all the way up to full. Yeah, even Lesser is fine. Oh, there's a lot of them. There's a whole lot of them. Oh, run. Big health potion. Big Restore Potion. Big Stamina Potion. Oh god, we just barely dodged that. Not want to get foost. No foos. Probably should be doing more buffs to two hand fortify armor rating. I should be good, I think. Then another health potion. So our last big one. Shit, I missed that. Damn it. Oh, okay, phew. Okay, got him. And we're out of charges again. And out of stamina. That went pretty well, though. Pretty pleased with that. 
do that, and then let's recharge our sword again. I don't think I have... Yeah, I have a lesser. Even a petty would do it, I think. It's fine. We did good, boys. We did pretty good. That was a lot of them. They're all a level, but still, we did pretty good. There's one more up there. more. Damn it. Okay. Took some hits, but we're okay still. We weathered it okay. Not too bad. Use a bad restore health potion here. How's my charges doing? Are we out now again? Just about. We got enough for like two or three more swings, though. Need more stamina, too. Now, I'm just about positive when we go up there, that sarcophagus right there is going to pop open. Like I said, I do remember some things from the original Skyrim. And I also remember there's a chest hidden over in one of these areas. There's a main chest up there, but it's also like a hidden chest around the side. I might get that while I'm waiting for my health to regen here. My, yeah, it's up there. Can I get up here? From here? Not sure if I can. Not really. Well, okay, we got health anyway now, so... I guess it's time... to piss this guy off. Can I attack the sarcophagus or anything and just spawn him prematurely? Looks like no. Oh boy. Nope. That first hit was not great, but that second one was good. Another frost sword. Okay. Not bad, guys. Not bad. And that's our foos. And pretty good stuff here. Again, one-handers. Too bad it's one-hander, not two-hander. A helmet of water breathing. Hmm. That's pretty awesome. Negate stamina penalties while swimming. Pretty cool. Like, it's a very nice chest overall. That was a high level enemy, but you know, we just. We just power attacked on top of them. Kill it before it can touch you. Oh, two chests. Not just one, but two chests over here. Oh, lots of nice stuff. Very nice. Alteration, archery, another water breathing. I guess I can disenchant that crappy water breathing one. The steel one. And then this one's really bad. This one, this one's really, really bad. Okay. Got it. All right, folks, we've done well. We've done very well here. Uh, my sword is already out of charges again, so I can go ahead and recharge that, I think, right? Yeah, it's already out. Okay, we'll do, a I guess, a common one. Maybe a petty. Thing is, I'm not sure if that petty soul gem... We'll do the, the soul tomato petty. I'm worried that I'm gonna... I think that petty one is a, uh, a grand soul gem. It just has a petty soul in it. I don't want to use that up, obviously. We are thirsty. I could do with some food, too.
And yeah, things went pretty well. All things considered. Quite happy with the outcome. Okay. So that spawned a dragon, though. Um... I am in no way, shape, or form confident that I can... Where's my horse? Oh, there's my horse. We're getting out of here, Dance. We're getting the hell out. Right the hell now. We're running away. This dragon will eat us alive. We're going to River Run. They can help us out. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. He sees me. Run away, Dance. Stick to the trees. Lose them in the trees. We're not ready to solo a dragon yet. Oh god, he's, he's still up there. Um, stick to the trees. Ay! Okay, we're okay. We're okay. If he landed back there, I think we're okay. I I just gotta get away. Oh, wait, are there two? If there are two, I'm really screwed. I think combat music is stopping. If combat music stops, we're okay. Go, dance, go. Go, dance, go. I have some fire resist gear that I would like to use. I don't even have a bow, do I? Yeah, I need like a decent bow and stuff to take care of this guy. To get him down, to get him grounded. Look, later, okay? We'll fight him later. For now, we're running. I think we're okay. Not sure where we are, but I think we're okay. Yeah, seems alright. Phew. Okay, we're just gonna go around the lake here. We're... Yeah, we're just gonna... You know what? We can just go, like, all the way around here and then go back up to Whiterun and uh, get a bow to properly take this thing down. So I should switch to my glass sword again. Oh, there's, like, mud crabs everywhere around here. All right, whatever. We'll kill the mud crabs. But, yeah, we're not gonna do that right now. I don't have a good bow. I don't have any fire resist gear. If I'm going to take it on a dragon, I need to, like, enchant some fire res on my gear. At the very least. Hello. Didn't happen to see the dragon running by, did you? Well, flying by anyway. Fishing spot over there. Okay. I'm going to wrap this up here for now, guys. I'm going to go back to main base, and um, we'll see about... We'll see a man about a, a bow, because, yeah, it's going to be rough without a bow. Pretty much impossible, I think.